You're watching Democratically Speaking. Mark Linder, your host. I'm the chairman of the Brockton Democratic City Committee, and uh, this is my duty and my honor to do this show. I have Doris Smith here, who's running, familiar face, running for council at large. Yes. Doris, welcome. Thank you so much, Mark. Thank you for being here. Thank you for telling us. Thank first of all, I want to thank you, and I probably should do it with every candidate, so I guess you're the first I'm doing it with. Thank you for running. Thank you for putting your name out there and come what may, win or lose. True. Okay, it takes a lot to run, I know, because I have, and I'll thank you for that. Thank you so much. My question to start with is, I know Doris Smith, but not everybody does. So tell us about Doris Smith. Tell us the Doris Smith story. Okay, well, the story, Doris Smith's story in brief is on her um, brochure, on my brochure. Um, I am um, one of the seven children of Beverly and Edward Smith of the east side of Brockton. And um, at an early age, all seven of us were sent into foster care due to a uh, unforeseen family illness. Um, so when I was ready to graduate high school, I got a 100% financial aid package to Simmons College, where I attended and graduated in four years with a degree with special education and elementary education. Um, and I have been a special education teacher, learning disabilities teacher, uh, uh, social remedial and academic teacher, and also I have learned learning adaptive behavior principles and I have earned a master's degree from Pittsburgh State University. I have held leadership positions and membership positions in Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, the Executive Board of the Boston Teachers Union. I've been the National Vice President of the American Federation of Teachers Black Caucus, Chair of the Black Caucus for the Boston Teachers Union, NAACP Chairwoman, Education Chair, I volunteered and door knocked in all the neighborhoods in Brockton for seven years every weekend during the election season. I have been a Democratic State Committee chairwoman for two years and um, a member of an officer of the Black People Task Force and Black Educators Alliance of Massachusetts. And presently, I am serving as a secretary for the Brockton Democrats, and you are the president. There you go. Now, I didn't know, I knew some of that because mm -hmm. I, I know your sister from Brockton Day Nursery, Benita. Yes. Okay, so education runs in the family. I did not know you were a Fitchburg State University grad, as am I. I have yes. my master's from Fitchburg. I did it all off campus. Didn't set foot on the campus too much. I did it at Minuteman High mm -hmm. in Lexington for two and a half years, and I got my master's in media management. So we're fellow alum. I did there not know that. Now, Doris, you've been, that quite a few accomplishments, quite a few things to put on your resume. I know you're a worker, okay? Is that why you're running for city council, to be a worker, to be an advocate for the people in Brockton? Well, Mark, what I consider uh, myself to be, because um, I've been endorsed by my union, SEIU 509, um, and the training that they provided me once they've endorsed me, is that um, for the last 30 years, after receiving that um, financial aid package from Simmons, I've been giving back. I've been a helper to the community. So for 30 years of all that experience I just stated, all of that was giving back for the fact that I got that scholarship that lifted me out of poverty from foster care. And that's part of, and part of my running for public office is that giving back. Mm -hmm. So service. Service. Okay, there's a, a theme for that. I'm a, I'm a Rotarian. I have to pin on it, service above self, okay? Mm -hmm. um, um, and I think, Mark, and I do think that um, Brockton, we, at this point um, where Brockton is at, is that we want to um, proactively start moving forward with Brockton. We want to see Brockton go to its most best potential. Um, and I feel that um, I, I do e education because I work for the Department of Education, but as part of my public service, I would like to run for city council and look at the city services, the funding of city services, and to make sure that all of our residents, um, because I door knocked for seven years every weekend in all the neighborhoods, I know that there are, there are certain groups of residents 
who use city services, and then I know that they are the homeowners that are basically funding that, those city services through their taxes. We've come to a point here now where we have to look at the, the whole picture. Where is Brockton going? How are we going to move it forward together? Not one neighborhood, not the other neighborhood, not the other neighborhood versus the two. All of us together sitting down, moving Brockton forward, bringing businesses into Brockton so that the pool of money isn't just on the homeowners who are paying taxes and the residents who need the services and deserve the services, the basic services, looking towards the homeowners to continually fund that pool of money. We need to look outside of that pool. And that is one important thing that's going to help Brockton move forward, in my opinion. Now, we're sitting at the end of August. We're heading into Labor Day. I'm not sure how long this is going to run, so I'm not going to date it too much. Mm -hmm. And we are going to run it the weekend before the election so everybody can see all the candidates. City Council's talking about putting an override on the ballot to permanently raise taxes, to buy a ladder truck, to buy voting machines, to buy vehicles for the police department, a whole host of different things. How do you feel about that as a taxpayer and a candidate, potential counselor? What do you think about that? Well, what I do think, Mark, is um, overrides have been difficult to pass. Um, they are difficult because you are looking at the same pool of resources, those homeowners putting that burden on their shoulders. Um, but if you have a good message about specifically what is that override going for, and you deliver that message effectively to all of the residents of Brockton, even those who are receiving services, and that message gets effectively sent and delivered, it's possible, but it's, a, it's going to be hard. Now, there are different issues on the table right now in terms of saving money or making money. Mm -hmm. You were one of the people very involved in the casino election. True. Okay? You were for it. True. Adamantly for it. True. Um, we're waiting now in Brockton to see what the License Commission ultimately does, but why were you for it, and is that what you're talking about, diversifying the revenue? Well, that's important. It's important to start looking outside of what is presently here versus the people who are receiving services in the homeowners in the businesses that are funding that pool of money. So we've got two segments that give into the pool and then another segment who largely uses those services, but also these residents also use like snow plow. They use those also in the street cleaning, in the water, in the sewer. They use those too. However, it was a person who had vision who went out and sought those two projects, the, um, the, the one project, which is the casino. They just didn't just happen to come and decide Brockton was a destination place to come to. Brockton needs, needs, needs a business growth that's going to start bringing people to Brockton, a destination place to come to instead of a place to just go through. And because the, the casino and its management were, were offering to the city a number of things, I think that that made it very attractive and something that we shouldn't have overlooked. And I was happy to participate in door knock for that project. Now, you're talking about getting people here. Mm -hmm. This yes. summer, there's been lots of shell casings around. There's been shootings. There's been crime. It's, it's a big issue in Brockton. Are they going to come? What, what do you think we should do about law enforcement and crime? Um, you're going to be a city council. You'll sit and review the mayor's budget on the police, whether we have enough police. What are your thoughts on crime and, you know, being a resident of the city for a long time? Uh, yes, I have. I have been a resident for the city for a long time. And I do think that 
with public safety, public safety is number one on my agenda um, because on our agenda, let's help Brockton move forward together. Because if you don't have public safety, if your public does not feel safe, you have all kinds of other issues that cannot be controlled if you don't have public safety. So it is number one on our agenda. And we feel that there's always more resources that can be added to that particular item. We don't want to take away anything that's already presently there. Mm -hmm. That's how we feel. Education. You talk about being lifted out of poverty, getting a full scholarship to do that. Does Brockton have the right resources? What's the relationship with the, with the council? You always hear this city side, school side stuff. To me, it's one Brockton. It shouldn't be a side, okay? You get to look at the school department budget as a city councilor. You, 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 you've, you've, being involved in a union like the American Federation of Teachers, like yes, you said. Yes, I have. Okay. Um, how important is education to you, and where would that fit in the priorities? Well, um, to me, um, education, public education is the great equalizer. Um, when a child comes to a classroom, um, any grade level from K to 12, that child is to come ready to learn. Um, it is staffed with highly trained teachers, and you are on your best behavior to demonstrate to that teacher that you are there A, to learn, B, ask questions, and C, ask for extra work. And that starts there, the relationship with the teacher and the student. And so education, if, if you use it, the structure that's already in place, and you have good parent support, parent outreach, and you build out from there, Teachers have rapport with parents day one, even before school starts. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot of things that happen before that child even hits the classroom, things you don't even see. The, to, uh, to make the child feel that the struggle of trying to learn is worth that struggle, and I can achieve, and I can try, and I'm going to struggle with it. It's not going to come easy. Some, some people it does. But it's that form of education, that just little crystal, little diamond, that we can all learn from and support. And from there, um, I am a former special needs teacher. Um, so I delight and seeing people who are special and unique in their own way be themselves and try to achieve every day and not be labeled or be judged, but just let them try to succeed and guide them. And they'll find their way. If you do it the right way, it can happen. Relationships and struggle seems to be a conflict a lot between the mayor's office and the city council. The form of government is strong council, weak mayor, plan B form of government. That's what we have. Are you a peacemaker? Are you someone that would try to bring the two parties together? I would say so. Um, Mark, I have um, volunteered in uh, the Democratic Party for over 30 years, I volunteered. Um, t the two Obama campaigns, the two Deval Patrick campaigns, the Markey campaign, the Elizabeth Warren campaign, all headquarters that were here in Brockton, I volunteered with another Democratic State Committee chairwoman at the time. So we reached out to everybody. We always do. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's what Democrats do. We are peacemakers, and we survive, and we will make our way. It's just something that happens. Okay. Power plant. Mm -hmm. You have changed your mind over the years. True. Okay. Why the change? And tell us what you feel about that, because it, it, it comes up every election. Sure. It's every every election I've covered here since I've been here for twenty, mm -hmm. not the whole twenty-one years, but most of it. That comes up. We'll probably talk about a debate night as well. What do you think? 
Well, what I do think, Mark, is um, when I first was introduced to the issue of the proposed power plant, um, I was working with a group that opposed the power plant. Um, so as part of volunteering with that grassroots organization, I participated opposing the power plant for years. Um, as a candidate, within the last year, I've had to look at, the, at what was on the table presently this year, as opposed to the settlement, settlement offers, who was handling the decision-making as far as um, we represent the city on this issue, we're going to support it, we're not, we're going to handle it in public, we're not going to talk about it in public, or we're going to go to, to court. So those number of things I've had to follow right now. And so when I decided that as a candidate, what was being offered within the last year, the settlement offer to settle, and also with, that, with the $68 million lawsuit that may have bankrupt the city, along with trying to uh, build the power plant, it was best, in my opinion, in looking at what the power plant, a gas-fired power plant, the same gas that is used in people's houses, would fuel this, this, this power plant and what the settlement offer was going to give the city and I've also visited the water um, plant treatment site and it's desolate there, it's desolate and I believe that um, it will bring tax tax revenue and jobs to the city of Brockton and also that I think that if um, in the final final discussion that um, as a woman of color that part of the discussion is that there are lo low income and minority uh, residents that will be affected by this I would hope that those individuals who want to curry that discussion. Um, also look toward the organizations in Brockton to see if they would support them um, with that discussion as far as the NAACP, the Haitian Community Partners, the Cape Verde Association, if not just using those words but getting the support of the organizations of color in Brockton to support them if they use that topic as part of the final debate, final discussion. Do you think the mayor has the authority or the city council has the authority to be the final arbiter of that settlement? The mayor said... Well, I, I believe the federal court gave the mayor the final, final um, arbitration. But however, from what I understand, mm -hmm. um, in September, the city council may go back and, and um, argue again. The desal plant, I think mm -hmm. you mentioned it, the water plant. Yes. The mayor's proposal is to buy it, not to make payments to it, to buy it and bond it, and it might even be part of the override. I'm not 100% sure because that's brand new news to me. How do you feel about that? They're talking about a water rate increase, possibly of 30%, and a huge bond. What do you think? Well, from what I understand, um, the contract with the with the diesel plant right now, um, we're paying, I believe, six million dollars a year, and we don't receive any water for that six million dollars. Um, so, and it's from what I understand, they say it's an ironclad contract. Um, ironclad being that two parties got together and stated that this was the terms. So I believe that right now, um, I was watching uh, one of the council meetings, that the city council has decided not to make one of the payments that are due and um, so if 
if, in, from what I understand, if the desal water plant never, never delivered any water for six million dollars. However, there was a point in time when we asked for water to be delivered and they did not live up to the contractual negotiations of what was supposed to be delivered. Then you can, if you so choose, hold that money in escrow and get them back to the bargaining table and renegotiate the contract. That's my opinion. Now I know since you've been door knocking for years that you're out doing it for yourself. You yes. have a young team, young people. Yes, I do. Don't going out with you. What are you hearing from the people out there? What are the issues you're hearing? We we may not have even talked about them yet. What are you hearing as you're going out door to door? Um, people want safe neighborhoods. People do. They want safe neighborhoods. They wanna they wanna feel that their home is safe and protected. And um, they're very disturbed about the fact that um, sometimes at night they can't go to bed um, because bullets are flying. And I can understand that. Mm -hmm. So that's the number one thing that I hear. Your issues. Have we talked about your issues, things that you want to bring to the table as a counselor, things that I may not have asked you about? What, what, what issues do you want to talk about? Well, I just, I, first of all, I would like for people to understand that um, even though um, I've had a depth of experience in um, public service around um, people of color and um, pr professional uh, people of color organizations and political organizations, that I will represent the whole city. Um, the Italians, the Greeks, uh, whomever. I, I'm not just here as representing the Haitians, the Cape Verdeans. We're gonna, I'm gonna represent the whole city. So, and part of that is when we say everybody in the pool, <laughs> everybody in the pool. Number one, our, our campaign is about public safety. Number two is diversity. Uh, we'd like to see more diversity um, in the city's uh, departments. Um, number three is pro-business, we've talked somewhat about that, and number four is, is education, which is the rock, the bedrock, the great equalizer. Another equalizer, and I'm going to put in a pitch for this because I happen to be chairman of the library board, where do other things fit in, in terms of your priorities? You have libraries, mm -hmm. you have the Council on Aging, you have veterans. How do you... What's the balance? I mean, you, you've told us about number well, one issue, but it, it's like there are two number one issues, safety and education. So where does it be three, four, five, six? Well, How does that work? If it wasn't for the seniors who helped pave the way, we wouldn't be here right now. Mm -hmm. I've always, always, every organization I've belonged in, I always go with someone who has more experience than I do who's more in depth than I do. I've always, they, they have more to give. So I'm not sitting with the young in, in over here. I'm sitting mostly with senior citizens in all organizations that I belong to because I, I just think that they are great. They have helped, they have helped me even with my slogan. Mm -hmm. Our slogan, let's help Brockton move forward together. They've helped, they came up with that slogan. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that. And I'm grateful to them for that. And, um, and also with uh, the veterans, um, I have a um, deceased brother who um, was a member of the Navy. And he served proudly. And... For um, us to miss Eddie um, is a great thing. Um, he was really stood tall, and he loved the Navy. And so we, we, we miss him, and we do know, know that the veterans um, give their lives in sacrifice. So when you're sitting there with the budget, and you have to pick mm -hmm. what to keep and what to cut, Mm -hmm. How do you do the priorities? I mean, you, the, the council can only 
cut the budget. The mayor crafts the budget, but the council, if you don't have the money, you either have to get revenue or cut things. So in order of priority, I've had people tell me, because I've advocated for the library for 20 years, Mark, I'm sorry if we're talking public safety or we're talking the library, we're going to go with public safety. So I, I'll put the question to you. I'm going to ask it. That mm -hmm. If I get to ask a question in the debate sure and not just be the moderator, that's the question I'm going to ask. And I'm going to ask everybody that because we're one of the smallest budgets. So is the Council on Aging. So is Veteran Services. Mm -hmm. They're not the big ticket budget items. So what's your answer? Mark, one of my first jobs was in the public library. And uh, putting away the books in the stacks. So I know the value of a public library. When the students come in, they have people of all ages and projects. So I know the value of a library. Um, I, I really, if I'm pressed right now, I would say that we can't do without them. Okay. Well, that's what you'll be hearing from me. Okay. Um, no more opinion from me. I'm, I just had to ask because I'm an advocate in schools. Three minutes left. I'm giving you two of them. Talk to the voter, tell them how to get in touch with you, how to get involved, and why Doree Smith. Two minutes. Sure. Two minute drill. All right. Uh, my name is Doree Smith. Um, I live in Brockton. I was born and raised, well, born in Brockton, and um, I've been, uh, as, as my union would say, I've been helping um, with the community for over 30 years, and now I'm running for public office. Um, I believe that public service is, is one of the great things about living in America. I think that us having a say in what and who guides us is very important. Please don't sit home on election day and just watch TV. If you don't vote for me, vote for somebody, but vote. It is very important. Don't let everyone make your decisions for you. And I hope that you would consider me for one of your four votes, one of, one of your four votes for council at large. I'm worth it. I won't let you down. I work hard every day. I've worked five days a week for my own salary and two days a week for the last 30 w years for you. Thank you so much. And if you give me the opportunity, I'll be out there some more. Thank you. Thanks, Therese. Um, you're watching Democratically Speaking. Make sure you watch all the candidates, you listen, and as Doris said and as I've been saying all along, make sure you do your right, your due diligence, your duty, and make sure you get out and vote on September 22nd. Brockton Community Access, Democratically Speaking, will bring you more candidates for City Council, Mayor, Council at Large, School Committee. We'll be there all the way through September and we'll be there all the way through November. So thank you for watching.